Well, after years of delays and setbacks, Boeing has successfully launched its Starliner capsule towards the International Space Station with two NASA astronauts on board. It was Boeing's third attempt to launch the spacecraft with the crew. The company becomes the second commercial operator to ferry crews to the ISS, joining SpaceX. Three, two, one, ignition and liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V, carrying two American heroes. The pilots are the first to crew the new spacecraft, testing the capsule on a mission that's expected to last a little more than a week. NASA has labelled the launch as a big success. This is another milestone in this extraordinary history of NASA. And I want to give my personal congratulations to the whole team that went through a, a lot of trial and tribulation, but they had perseverance. Well, let's get more on this now with astrophysicist from Swinburne University of Technology, Dr. Rebecca Allen. Rebecca, welcome. Thanks. Okay, so finally lift off seven years late. Did you think Starliner would get off the ground after all those delays? Uh, look, I was really a little worried um, after the last couple of delays and they were actually kind of tossing around wor words like grounded indefinitely. But um, like they said, you know, perseverance is really key. And they solve these issues not only with the Starliner spacecraft, but with the Atlas V rocket, which for the first time was launching that crew vehicle and it's just so critical when you're launching crew that everything has to go right mm -hmm. so really you know i have to applaud boeing because safety is paramount here yeah it's interesting i mean why were there so many delays to this program where if you look at the other uh, commercial partner spacex didn't perhaps have the same journey it's really interesting because and everything that has to go into that. Um, I think the other piece of it, unfortunately, we can blame COVID a little bit for the delays. Mm -hmm. uh, there just was that kind of hiccup between the the um, uncrewed flight and then trying to schedule and get everything right for that crewed test. Um, and then, of course, we've seen um, oxygen relief valves on the rocket and then the helium uh, with the, the vessel itself, the module. And so there's just some kind of common and not common but typical engineering issues that you just can't foresee until you've got this on the launch pad mm. but then just delays you know unfortunately with the pandemic that just really stretched out the timeline but spacex you know they were able to get in really and start operations before the pandemic and so it's just really shown the difference mm. because now they've flown you know a dozen missions to the iss and are continuing on that journey yeah just continuing on the the commercial aspect of this just how critical is this mission for Boeing, which, as yes. we all know, is under pressure after a series of safety incidents on its planes. Yeah. Well, look, I'd, I'd say um, there's definitely a lot of relief going around the Boeing office right now. It's a monumental thing to develop, you know, a crude space uh, capsule. And so it's definitely not, even though they've been involved with NASA since the Apollo program, you know, fundamental in the shuttle program, they're really doing so much that it just shows you, you really have to have this focus and dedication uh, to be able to achieve this kind of feat. And that even in 2024, it's not a simple thing to go to space and go to the space station. Mm. But it's really important for us as we look to continue, um, you know, humankind's journey and, you know, long-term human space flight, we need this commercial crew program. So we can't just depend on SpaceX to just ferry astronauts back and forth. We need the secondary crew module. So I think it's a big day for NASA knowing now that we have these options. And I think the ISS crew is really excited because they're getting some um, some well-requested supplies on this. Yes. On this yeah. yeah, yeah, and some fresh people to talk to. Um, tell me about what this Starliner journey will look like, what it's testing, if successful, what it hopes to achieve. So right now, um, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams are safely in orbit and they are undertaking hours worth of tests on the, the capsule to make sure the hardware, software, communications, make sure everything is going as it should if they want to continue you know, um, to use this as a crewed module to take astronauts to and from the space station. And then they get, I won't even call it like sleep, they just get a few hours of rest before then they will prepare to dock with the International 
Space Station, which is done autonomously. So that means that the astronauts actually won't do it, but they want to make sure that all the systems are in place and, and are operating as they should. They'll dock with the space station. They'll spend oh, about a week with the crew of the ISS. Again, still doing more testing on the capsule from the other side to make sure it's operating as it should. And then they'll help the ISS um, crew with some of their important science before they get back on the capsule and then come back home. Mm. So it's a very short and intense um, uh, test flight, but that's what's critical here is that they are literally going to be spending all of their time making sure that everything is operating just as it should so that we can put this into regular operation. Rebecca, you mentioned that that's, it's an autonomous docking with the International Space Station. What are the challenges associated with that? Well, uh, you know, when you are, you know, docking autonomously, you have to make sure that, you know, your computer systems are operating as they should, because that's what's telling the space station and the, the capsule that you are lined up correctly and that you your distances are correct. And then you have this really important um, moment when the capsule docks with the Harmony module on the ISS. So the alignment and the spacing and the timing, the speed, everything has to be perfect. And so we've seen this a lot, you know, recently with the lunar landers, um, uh, you know, the distance, judging that distance and how it's done autonomously. And what's incredible is, you know, we're getting breakthroughs now in the, the technology that's able to do that. But you still have to make sure what we call you want the human in the loop. So we still want to make sure that these systems are, you know, online acting as they should. And then that they should be able to take the, the Starliner safely to the ISS. Mm. And we, we wish NASA astronauts Bush, Wilmore and Sunny Williams all the very best. But for now, Rebecca Allen, thank you for your time. You're welcome.